G'day, my name's Eddie Springer and I'm from Springer Solar and today we're here to talk about batteries. I want to give you a technical overview about some of the myths about batteries and the batteries we should be trying to use in our RVs. So when we talk RVs, camper trailers, caravans, motorhomes, four-wheel drives and boats. There's two main types of batteries on the market. We've got our cranking battery and our deep cycle batteries. Cranking batteries are designed for that, cranking an engine. You know, they're designed for short spurts of high current to start the engine of our vehicles. These batteries have quite thin lead plates in them and they're not designed for long continuous discharge and recharge. They're designed for starting an engine and we should use them for that. The batteries that we're concerned with for our RVs are deep cycle batteries. Deep cycle batteries come in various chemistries. We've got our conventional flooded cell. A flooded deep cycle battery will have removable caps along the top and we replace electrolyte into those as required. More so these days we're going to a maintenance free battery. So a maintenance free deep cycle battery would be a lead calcium, an AGM battery like these, or a gel, or a lead carbon or a lead crystal battery. These two batteries are AGM batteries and predominantly that's what we're using in our RVs in our business because they're good value for money, they've got good service life. When we're looking at our deep cycle batteries, these batteries have thicker lead plates in them and they are designed for long continuous discharge. We discharge them, we recharge, and we do that over and over again. The depth of discharge on each cycle, so the amount of energy that we pull out of these batteries every time we use them, will determine how many times we can do that. So deep cycle batteries have a cycle life graph for them. You can get in touch with the manufacturer and you can look at the expected life of your deep cycle batteries as per how, how much you're pulling out of them on each cycle. If we discharge these batteries from full to flat every time we use them, we will only get a limited number of cycles out of them. Manufacturers are very good at knowing how hard you can work their batteries. You run these from full to flat, you'll get just outside your warranty period. If we discharge them less on each cycle, so 50% of their capacity, our cycle life increases dramatically. You know, we start getting more and more usage out of these. We start getting three to five years out of our deep cycle batteries. If we discharge them less again, we're only using 30% of their capacity, we extend the life even further. You know, I've got customers and I've got plenty of people out there that get five plus years out of their batteries, but more common, three to five years is a good innings out of a deep cycle battery. Batteries that fail prematurely are murdered. If you deeply discharge your battery on each cycle and they're not getting the right charging regime, they will fail very quickly and they're expensive. Now, batteries are expensive. So when monitoring our batteries, the easiest way to monitor batteries is via voltage. That might be a small voltmeter on the dash of your vehicle. It might be a little uh, analog voltmeter with a needle gauge that you have in your RV, or it might just be a simple multimeter. You know, a simple multimeter will allow you to tell the voltage in your battery, and from that you get a feel for how full or flat the battery is. When measuring voltage, we need to know a little bit more about what's going on in the system. Has the battery been recently charged? Is it under extensive load at the time of checking it? All these things will go into and all these things will determine your state of charge. So when measuring voltage on a battery, if a battery is at rest, so there's no form of charge connected to it, no solar panel, no vehicle connected to it, and there's no load on it, so we're not discharging the battery. Battery at rest, a fully charged 12 volt battery is about 12.8 volts. And this little chart here shows us state of charge in correlation with voltage. So 12.8 volts is a fully charged battery at rest with roughly every 0.1 of a volt drop down from 12.8, we go down 10% of their capacity. So 12.8 full, 11.7, 11.65 volts is dead flat. Okay, now I've tested many a battery below 11 uh, and a half volts. Those batteries are cactus. They've been worked beyond their capacity. But when we're in regular service life of our batteries, we measure voltage, and from voltage we can determine our overall state of charge. So this is a brand new battery, um, just off the shelf. 
you know, it should measure around 12.7, 12.8 volts. I'll get my leads around the right way. 12.9 volts on that battery. Okay, so it's a fully charged battery at rest. With every 0.1 of a volt drop down from that, we're losing roughly 10% capacity. If I measured that battery there at 12.2 volts and we go to our table, you know, we're 50% discharged. Discharging beyond that capacity is starting to do damage to the battery and shorten its life. We'd want to be looking for recharge on that battery. So voltage is the simplest and easiest way to measure the state of charge of our battery. And like I said, you get a feel for that voltage. We start driving down the road, we'll see the voltage rising on that battery. To charge a 12 volt battery, we need to apply a voltage to it greater than its internal battery voltage. So resting voltage of a fully charged battery, 12.8. To charge that battery, we apply a voltage of 14.4 volts to it. We apply the voltage greater than the internal battery voltage and the battery voltage will rise. It starts taking on that energy. It starts to charge. The next level above voltage is a state of charge monitor. Now, available in many different types, but this is a Victron uh, BMV, so battery uh, monitor. And what it does is it measures the amount of energy you're putting into your battery and the amount of energy you're taking out. It also will tell you voltage, but from that energy calculation of energy in and energy out, it's able to determine a state of charge. So you scroll through on the screen and you'll see total amount of amps going in, total amount of amps going out, and from that we determine 70%, 60%, 50% state of charge. Voltmeter is good for a single battery and a smaller setup. State of charge monitor for more expensive setups, bigger batteries, bigger ba battery banks. So our deep cycle batteries have got quite thick lead plates in them, different to our cranking batteries. And because of this, they're very stubborn to charge. So they require a lot more energy to get them back to full. So a simple alternator charge setup will struggle to get deep cycle batteries up to 100% full. We need more sophisticated charging algorithms to charge these batteries. All good quality battery chargers and all good quality DC to DC charge controllers for our vehicles will have a sophisticated algorithm for our bit different battery types. You know, that, the main stages of that algorithm, and you might have heard it in older chargers, is a three-stage battery charger. So it's got a bulk, absorption, and float state for charging. You know, the Enerdrive charger displays those algorithms on the back. During our bulk stage of charging, we're delivering maximum current into our batteries, and we're holding the voltage at a set voltage. You know, for most common for batteries, about 14.4 volts. And we're delivering energy into those batteries to bring that voltage up to charge them up. Once the battery's about 80 to 90% full, we step into the, the charge will automatically move into that next stage of charging, which is the absorption stage of charge. The voltage is held at 14.4 and the current starts to be backed off. You know, we start, you know, this charger here is a 40 amp charger. It starts uh, pulling back on the amount of current going into that battery. That might happen for another couple of hours of our charging and then the charger will determine that the battery is full. The charger will then go into a maintenance or a, or a float stage. So the voltage will drop back as well. It's finished delivering the maximum amount of energy into our battery and the float stage kicks in, 13.6 volts and the current drops right back. Your solar controllers will do the same thing, that three stage charging algorithm. Your DC to DC charge controller from your vehicle alternator, three stage charging. That's what deep cycle batteries need to charge them to 100% full. When sizing our batteries for our system, we need to know how much energy we require. So we might have a small uh, 12 volt fridge that's drawing 25 to 35 amp hours a day. Theoretically, a 120 amp hour battery will run that fridge for four days if you were gonna discharge it from full to flat. But we know we wanna conserve the energy in these batteries. We don't wanna discharge them from full to flat. 50% of their, of their overall capacity will give us good life. So we might run that fridge for two days out of that battery. Two days on our 30 amp hour per day fridge 
we'll draw 60 amp hours out of our battery and we've got 120 amp hour total capacity. If you want to calculate the amount of energy that your products are going to draw from your battery system, we need to know a couple of things. We need to know the wattage of the appliance and we also need to know the voltage we're running it at. So a simple calculation. If we had a 12 watt light, a small LED or a small fluoro light, and we're running it at 12 volts, 12 divided by 12 equals one. That 12 watt light is drawing one amp. If we run that light for one hour, it has drawn one amp hour out of our system. So amp hours is overall energy, it's, it's power over time. So our 12 watt light at 12 volts, drawing one amp. If that was 120 watt appliance, might be a big floodlight or it might be something different, 120 watts at 12 volts is gonna draw 10 amps. We run that appliance for one hour, it's pulled 10 amp hours out of our 120 amp hour battery. So you could go around your rig and add up all the different appliances and get the total amount of watts that you're drawing and if you're running those items for three or four hours, you'd have the total amount of watt hours for the day. Divide that by 12 and you'll get the total amount of amp hours you're going to take out of your battery. The bigger the daily load, the bigger the battery bank we need because we don't want to cycle these batteries too hard. We want to ensure there's enough reserve capacity in them that we're not over discharging them. Like we said before, a well-maintained and a well-charged battery that is not over-discharged will get good life out of it. You know, batteries that are, are flogged too hard will, will fail, will fail prematurely. So look at the items you're running, add them up, look at the, the total watt hours, the total amp hours, and that allows you to size your battery system. So some things to remember about maintaining and keeping your deep cycle batteries in good condition. Depth of discharge determines cycle life. You know, I can't emphasize that enough. The harder you work your batteries, the less number of cycles you'll get. Use proper, good quality battery chargers. You know, use a charger that's got that three-stage algorithm and most of the time have got specific battery types on them. This charge will allow you to set it to AGM, to gel, to lithium, set the battery type applicable to your batteries. A well-maintained battery is a battery that's always on charge. So if your vehicle is not in use, that battery, that deep cycle battery should be connected to a 240 volt charger, a small solar panel, or it should get periodic battery charging. That will extend the life out of your battery system. Deep cycle batteries aren't cheap, you know, they're expensive items maintain them, look after them, and you will get many, many cycles out of them, and you get much happier trips. You know, the worst thing that can happen on a trip is batteries going flat, fridges going uh, hot, you know, beer's not cold, food's going off. So maintain your batteries, look after them, check the voltage occasionally, and keep them charged.